Our task for today is to discuss and exhaust the topic pests and parasites. At the end of the study, you should be able to one differentiate between pests, parasites, and vectors, given examples. Then you should also be able to explain the two types of parasites given examples. Then you should also be able to state the effects of pests and parasites. Then lastly, you should be able to describe the methods of controlling pests and parasites. And before we progress, let's get the introduction to the topic. We have learned earlier that deficiency of food substances can cause diseases. We also learned that pathogens and unfavorable conditions of the weather can also cause diseases. However, pests and parasites can also cause diseases to humans, plants, and animals. In this lesson, therefore, we are going to learn about pests and parasites, what they are, their activities on humans, crops, and animals, and then we further discuss the causes and how they can be avoided or controlled. Now let's get the definition to pests and parasites. As you can see on the screen, a pest is an organism that is an animal that causes damage to people, crops, and animals. An example is the mosquito, the housefly, the church fly, the weevil, and so on. So pests are normally animals. Then a parasite is an organism, either a plant or an animal, that lives on or in another plant or animal, in which case we call the host, for survival, and then this time, the parasite causes harm to the host. Examples of such parasites are lice, worms, Mr. Two, tick, etc. Now, a host is an organism on or in which a parasite lives. Then we talk of vectors, and then here are displayed on the screen. A vector is an animal that transmits or spreads diseases. That's the parasite that causes diseases among people, crops, or animals. Examples of such vectors are the mosquito, which spread the malaria parasite. The church fly also transmits or spreads the trypanosoma, that's the parasite that causes the sleeping sickness. And then other vectors are also mentioned. Now let's look at the types of parasites. We have basically two types or two categories of parasites. In other words, parasites are grouped under two headings. The first is endoparasites. And this means that they are the parasites that live inside the host. An example is the tapeworm, the roundworm, the hookworm, the liver fluke, and then the guinea worm. All these parasites live inside their host. And the second category or group of parasites is the ectoparasite. And they are those ones or those parasites that live on the skin of their hosts. Example is the tick, the lice, mite, and then another is the ringworm. Then an animal parasite may live in or on an animal host, and then a plant host as well. So an animal parasite can live on either a plant host or an animal host. In the same way, a plant parasite may also live in or on a plant host or an animal host. So you can have a situation where an animal is a parasite and living on a plant, or a plant is also a parasite and also living in or on an animal. That is what I try to explain. 
Okay, let's now consider some human parasites and the skin diseases they cause. The first to discuss here is Berhazia. It is a disease that is caused by a parasite called the blood fluke. Then here the blood fluke lives in two hosts, as the human beings and the water snail. What it means is that at one point in time, the parasite may be living in a human beings, and then at another point of its life cycle, to also be living in the water snail. The behavior is contracted through bathing in water that is contaminated with the blood fluke from the urine or feces of infected people. And the second disease that is caused by parasite here is guinea worm. The guinea worm is also caused by a worm that lives in both human beings and water fleas. Take note that the Bohazia lives in human beings and water snail, whereas the guinea worm lives in human beings and water fleas. An infected person develops blisters or swellings on the skin near the ankles, the knees, and the elbow. These blisters opens into sores, so then the body becomes full of small sores. A long thread-like worm comes out of the sore, and that is the guinea worm. When the person infected with a sore bath in water, the embryos or the eggs that have been laid by the guinea worm are released into the water and are eaten by the water fleas. So this is how come the embryos get into the water fleas. So whilst in water, the eggs are hatched in the water fleas and they use the water flea as their host in water. Skin diseases are damages caused to the skin by ectoparasite. That is, those parasites that live on the skin of the host. Then they take the form of rashes, itches, small sores, and so on. Examples are the ringworm, the yaws, don't say yaws, because there's an account name that is yaw. This is not yaws, it is yaws. Then you have the foot rot, then the scabies, and others. So these are to mention about some few skin diseases. Let's now consider some common plants and animal pests and parasites. The table presents the pest or parasite, then the animal or plant they attack. So here the first on the table is the weevil, which is a pest. Then it attacks the maize plant, either on the field or even when it is harvested and brought home. So then the maize can affect the plants while on the farm or even trace it back home and then still cause harm to it after harvesting. The next is the stem borers, that's also a pest, and they also attack plants like maize, cuckoo, etc. What they do is that they bore into the stem of the plants and then they thereby destroy the plant. That is, the plant ceases to grow well. The next again is armyworm, and that is also a pest. They also attack the maize. They bore into the grains and eat the powdery product of the grains. They are called armyworms. Then the next is church fly. Then that is also a pest. It can also be a vector because it transmits the parasite of the sleeping sickness disease. Now they have attacked the cattle, the goat, the sheep, and even human beings. So take caution so that you don't allow the church fly to bite you. Otherwise, you suffer from the sleeping sickness. The next on the table is mosquito. That's also a pest. It can also be a vector because it also transmits the malaria parasite and this attack mostly human beings. Then the continuation of the pest and the animals or plants they attack. 
here we have the locusts and they are like grasshoppers then they also attack the cassava in most cases they also attack the maize in some other cases then the grasshopper itself also attack the cassava and the maize that is they feed on the leaves of the cassava and the maize then we have the tick and then it is an ectoparasite they also attack the dogs cattle and other farm animals they stick to the skin of their host and then they tap into the bloodstream and then suck their blood then the next is the lice that's the pura of laos they are also ectoparasite then they affect poultry cattle sheep and several other farm animals then again we have the tapeworm the roundworm the hookworm and all the worms they are endoparasites because they live within their host then this type of parasites affect human beings or they attack human beings and other livestock like the cattle the sheep the goat the pigs and so many others Let's now talk about some pests and parasites and then how they look like. So this is a beetle. Then it destroys mostly tuber crops like the yams, water yams, cocoa yam, and so on. They bore holes into the tubers, then they eat the content of it. So sometimes you buy a tuber of yam from the market and see that it is full of holes with the food that you are interested in being eaten by these beetles then this the flea of course we talked about water flea when we we're talking about guinea worm this the flea how it looks like then this is a typical worm and they also live inside their host now let's look at how these parasites and pests can be controlled once they are controlled their diseases are also controlled we have several methods of controlling these pests and parasites and these are simplified in the table as presented on the screen we have the table which is headed by methods the advantage of that method and then the disadvantage so the first method is the use of chemicals in this case we call it chemical control of pests or parasites the chemicals are mostly sprayed that is spraying or the animals are dipped into the solutions of chemicals or either the chemicals are also given to the animals through oral administration that is the chemical is introduced into the organism or animal through the mouth so we call it oral administration here the advantage is that it is very effective once you take an appropriate chemical that is an antidote to a pest or parasite it quickly kills the pest or parasite so we say it is very effective now the disadvantage of chemicals is that non-targeted organisms are likely to be killed or affected for instance in a case of controlling some pest on a farm other insects which are necessary for pollination may be killed by the chemicals so we see here that non-targeted organisms or insects are affected it also had side effects most of the chemicals do not biodegrade easily that means they can stay for a longer time before their effect is finally destroyed so when they are used on crops they can finally be in the crop and when it is consumed they rather cause diseases to the human beings so that is a disadvantage of using chemicals in pest and parasite control the next is using cultural practice control so we call it cultural control that is when you use good sanitation and then you practice good hygiene or you also ensure good ventilation in your farm animals or even within human beings you kind of avoid some pests or parasites in this case the advantage is that it is cheap to practice 
because you don't buy any chemical, you don't involve money. But the disadvantage is that it is very difficult to apply since treating already affected plants and animals becomes very difficult. Here, no chemical or antidote is used. You only ensure good safety. So if an organism is already affected by the plant parasite or disease, there's no way you can cure it. And so you see that is a disadvantage. The third point is that we use physical control, that is hand picking, and then it is typical in ectoparasites and dormant pests. When you see dormant pests, those pests that do not move very fast, so you can quickly chase them and then kill them with any tool. Example of parasites that can be hand picked are the tick on farm animals and others. Here also we see it is cheap to practice because it doesn't involve money. Just use your hand or other tools to pick the parasites or pests. And the disadvantage is that it cannot be applied on a large scale farming. So assuming you have a whole house of poultry, you can't go around picking ticks on them or picking ticks on cattle and so on. So it cannot be applied on large scale farming. That is a disadvantage. We will continue with the methods of controlling pests and diseases. We also have the biological control method, which is using resistant breeds of crops or animals. And then we can also use predator organisms that may feed on the pest or parasites. When we're treating the ecosystem, we made mention of predators and prey. So here the predator is an organism that may feed on the pest or parasite. So you can just introduce for instance, fowls into a farm to pick up grasshoppers. That is a biological control method. Here we see it has no chemical side effect and that is an advantage because the crops may not be poisoned by chemicals. The disadvantage, we don't have any concrete disadvantage for now as in the case of spraying with chemicals or others. They also have another method we call the integrated management. Integrated management method. And when we say integrated, it means we are putting two or more things together. So we say we apply all the methods that have been discussed above, all in one method. We call it integrated management approach. And so we see here another advantage that all the advantage of the above method can fall under the advantage of the integrated management system. And then the disadvantage of the already discussed method can also be the disadvantage for the integrated management approach since they are all used in one. And so this takes us to the end of the lesson, Pest and Parasites. But before we go away, let's look at the summary or some key notes to keep in mind. We earlier discussed that pathogens and unfavorable weather conditions can cause diseases. We also said that diseases can be caused by eating unbalanced diet or malnutrition. But under this topic, we've also come to realize that pests and parasites can also transmit diseases to both plants, animals, as well as human beings. Pests are animals that cause damage to plants and animals, whereas parasites may be plants or animals that live in or on their host. They live on their host for survival and then they cause harm to them. Now parasites can be grouped into two, that is ectoparasites, those that live on the outside of the skin of their host. And then we have also endoparasites, which are those ones that live within their host, that is inside their host. Then finally, we see pests and parasites are nuisance in crop and animal production, and so they must be avoided or controlled. Otherwise, the plants 
in animals may suffer the effect of this parasite and pest. And those effects are low yield, low productivity, poor meat, and other products of the farm, plant, as well as the animals. On that note, we come to the end of the lesson and it treats the topic pests and parasites. We hope to meet again for further studies. Bye-bye for now.